Shalom and greetings, everybody. Brother Nicholas James Vanderling, Victory for the People of Israel from By the Narrow Path, which are the Ten Commandments. Today is the 22nd day of the 11th month, February 8th, 2020. This video is being presented from the country of Cyprus. This video is titled Tabernacle Set Up on the First Day of the First Month. The tabernacle was a sundial. According to an independent researcher named Andrew Hoy, the materials of the tabernacle, there is a huge amount of surplus of materials left over on the shoebox model that many people have presented. Rather, when Andrew Hoy proposes that the tabernacle was really a dome yurt, and that the footprint of the tabernacle would have been a decagon, a ten-sided decagon. Each corner is 144 degrees, and what he did was he looked at the panel sizes. There's a lot of extra materials, and it just didn't make sense with the shoebox model. So he actually used the materials and the dimensions of the materials and formed a yurt, which is pretty cool considering it's a dome. So as I mentioned, the, this was a decagon. Um, but the Great Pyramid has eight sides, and Moses, they came from Egypt. So you see the eight sides right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The tabernacle would have had ten sides. Many people know this, but the pyramid was a sundial and designed to read the equinoxes and the solstice events. So here's what it looks like on a solstice. And here's what it looks like on an equinox. The mathematical precision of this is pretty amazing. So this person, Andrew Hoy, who I'm not familiar with, other than uh, I listened to part of one of his interviews he has done, he suggested that the tabernacle could have been used as a sundial as well, like the, like the pyramids. And I concur with that, that this tabernacle was at least used to measure the spring equinox, which is the day that the sun goes in his tabernacle, as I proved from my previous video. No matter the shape of the tabernacle, whether it is a dome or whether it was the shoebox, as you can see right here, at sunrise on the day of the spring equinox, the sun would have shined at the tabernacle's entrance, whether it was a shoebox or a dome because the tabernacle was facing due east. This is the same with the temple, um, as the temple also was positioned due east. So imagine if the, the doors to the temple and the, the curtains to the tabernacle were opened and you could see into the holy place. And here is the holy place of the uh, uh, artist rendition of the holy place of Solomon's temple and an artist rendition of a shoebox tabernacle Notice the gold that is on the walls and imagine if the doors were opened and or the curtain uh, into the holy place, not the holy of holies, but the curtain into the holy place, the curtain into the holy place, not the holy of holies. If it was, if that door was open it would, on the spring equinox, the sun would shine right in there and it would be a pretty spectacular. Psalm 19 one through six, I proved this in my last video. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So in my previous video, I proved that the spring equinox, the 365th day of the solar cycle, is the, is the, is the tabernacle for the sun. I presented my theory that the sun goes into the tabernacle slash chamber, the spring equinox, after it runs its 364 day race, completing its circuit. Considering the temple and the tabernacle are both due east, as I just mentioned previously, the sun literally goes into the temple on this day if the doors are opened. 
The sun comes out of his chamber the following day, which is the first day of the first month, and runs his 364-day race again. And on that day, the first day of the first month, Moses was instructed by Yahweh to set up the tabernacle on the first day of the first month. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And then down here in verse 17, And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month. So first day of the first month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, and set up the boards thereof, and put in the bars thereof, and reared up its pillars, and he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent upon it, as uh, Yahweh commanded Moses. And then he put in the testimony into the ark, and set the staves of the ark, and he put the mercy seat upon the ark, and he brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the veil of the covering, and covered the ark of the testimony, as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward and lightened the lamps before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent in the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and offered it up upon it the burnt offering, and the meat offering, and Yahweh, or the bread offering. Uh, and Yahweh commanded Moses, and he set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and put water there to wash withal. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat, when they went into the tent of the congregation, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed, as Yahweh commanded Moses, and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle of the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work, all on the first day of the first month. So he had a lot of preparation time to do it. He knew that they were going to do it, so he had... About six months to get that prepared, possibly. I don't know how many months he had it to get it prepared. So on the first day of the first month, Moses set up the tabernacle. Why would Yahweh Elohim instruct Moses to set up the tabernacle on the first day of the first month? The tabernacle door was facing due east, which aligns with the rising sun on the day of the equinox event. The day of the tabernacle for the sun, according to Psalm 19. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. To set up the tabernacle due east, Moses would have had to have taken measurements throughout the year or the rest of the year from the time that he was instructed to, to, to bring these elements together to build, to create the elements. And, he would have, and Moses would have made the final measurements and alignments for the floor plan on the day of the spring equinox event. So they would have set up, the as you would prepare a camp uh, to put up a tent or a campsite, you would lay out all the materials around. And then once everything is laid out and you have the, the, the everything mapped out and then you have the poles in, in their area, you have the... The, the tent pegs in their area, you have the, um, uh, the, 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 su the support beams where they have to be, and then you have the tent ready to go on top. Same thing. Moses would have had it all lined up. He would have had the floor, he would have had it l the, lined up due east and had all the measurements taken on the spring equinox event. That would have been the final day for the measurements that he would have had to take to make sure that it was aligned perfectly. So this is why I believe that the first day of the first month isn't on the equinox. He would need the equinox day to align it because the sun would rise in the east and set in the west. So it would be making sure that from both angles 
that it was calibrated perfectly. And so to calibrate it perfectly, he would have to use shadows. They would have to use shadows. And one of the things he could have used, one of the tools he could have used for to cast a shadow could have been his staff. Now he would need probably many more tools other than the staff, but the staff would have been a pretty darn good tool to, to use to cast a shadow line of the sun rising in the east and also the sun setting in the west, the shadow that the sun would set in the west. So if this be the case, we can speculate that at sunrise, on the day of the spring equinox, the sun would shine into Yahweh's tabernacle, paying homage to Yahweh. Um, remember, the, the, holy, the Holy of Holies, the curtain was there. So the sun was not allowed to get in the Holy of Holies. Um, remember, the day of the spring equinox is not a holy day. Now, you might be saying, well, Nick, this sounds really pagan, the sun shining in the tabernacle. Where do you think Satan got the idea from? Satan has nothing original. He stole it from Yahweh, Elohim. Have you guys not seen King Hezekiah's seal? What, are the onks on King Hezekiah's seal, the Egyptian onks, are they pagan to you? Uh, you know, he has the, the sun with the, the winged sun. Is that pagan to you? You know, um, Satan, Hasetan, and the pagans have counterfeited Yahweh Elohim's design for millennium. Since the beginning, HaSatan has counterfeited Yahweh Elohim's truths and has changed the worship. He has taken the worship away from the creators, from the Father and the Son. Okay? And he has taken the uh, worship from them and turned that worship to the creation, which is totally wicked. So look, Yahweh, his, when he created his creation, it was good. So in my previous video, the spring equinox equals the tabernacle, I have this slide up here and I talked about it being a satanic counterfeit. And this is what it is. This is a, a graphic of Washington, D.C. And look how the satanic pagan Freemasons, look how the sun rises the Capitol Mall is facing due east. So if you were standing uh, from the Capitol Mall, looking at the Capitol, uh, the sun is rising out of the Capitol. That means that the sun is rising on the Capitol. And if you turn around, the sun is not rising just on the Capitol. It's rising across the Capitol Mall. It's rising on the Washington Monument, the big um, Baal shaft. And then it's rising on Abraham Link inside Abraham Lincoln's Lincoln Memorial. All of these pagan worship, wicked things that these wicked Baal worshipers. So here's a view of Washington, D.C. The Capitol is right here. This is the National Mall. Here is the Washington Monument. And here's the Lincoln Memorial. If this is facing due east, when the sun would rise, and then it would cast a shadow, and that monument would cast a shadow this way when the sun would rise in the east. And then also that sun would rise in the east and it would perfectly in the Lincoln Memorial. Now, when the sun would set in the west on that same day, the Washington Monument would cast a shadow on the National Mall. So for in the morning, it's casting a shadow on the World War II Memorial. In the evening, at sunset, it's casting a shadow on the National Mall. And the sun is shining in the Capitol steps this way into the building. So it's just super pagan, uh, super satanic, super wicked. I usually don't get into all of this, you know, stuff that seems conspiratorial, even though that it is true. Uh, but it's just, that's what we're dealing with, right? So now let's go ahead and get into some great, uh, this is going to be great because I'm expecting the sun to come out of this chamber on the first day of the first month to run his race when the sun rises in the fourth portal. It could rise in the fourth portal on March 20th, this leap day. I'm having a real big challenge on how to calibrate the year and where to place the leap day if it's supposed to be localized or not. So I have flip-flopped on it and this is the biggest challenge that I have that I am having right now, and I'm working through it. So hopefully I'll come to a conclusion in the next couple of days or so. I am saying that I do 
right now I'm looking at the most possible day for this for the for the bridegroom the bridegroom comes out of his chamber when on the first day of the first month is the first day of the first month this year on March 21st or is it on March 20 one of these two days now is going to be the first day of the first month it all depends on how we are to calibrate the leap day and I don't have an answer to this at this time now the following year it calibrates itself which is cool uh, which is great it's just this year do we add it to this year that we're in the leap day to this cycle that we're in or to the next one the following equinox in March 2021 that will we will know exactly for sure because of the timing of the sunrise but this one has a sunrise right the spring equinox occurs at sunrise here there's a problem going east uh, we want to see if we can do where we can have harmony in the world where the whole world is on the same day and there's a way to do it i've also i'm testing the the international dateline and i found i believe that australia and new zealand should not be in front of hawaii they should be on the same day as hawaii and you know a couple of hours behind respectively they should not be on the day ahead of hawaii um, the day would start in the land of the rising sun which is either uh, japan or shanghai and work its way west you want africa in the south asia in the east and europe in the west that should all be on the same day with jerusalem in the center and that's for a whole other video so anyways back to this day there's a lot going to happen on this day i am anticipating um this event the son of righteousness rapture i've already did a video on this thinking that it was a solar solstice the summer solstice and i did that video about a year and a half ago and hallelujah now i've come into the understanding that it looks like it's going to be on the spring on the first day of the first month i have it narrowed down to either this day or this day i have march 20th 2020 or march 21st 2020. that's my best understanding at this time i'm not saying it's happening for sure but i believe that this event now what is this event i don't know what this event is going to be okay the man child uh this is a man child event i'm not 100 percent certain to it i know you not that ye are the temple of Eloah, and that the spirit of elohim dwell in you and then second corinthians 6 16 18 for ye are the temple of the living Eloah. As Elohim hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their Eloah, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith Yahweh Almighty. We are the temple of the living Elohim. In Revelation chapter 15, and I saw another sign in heaven, a great marvel of seven angels having the, la the seven last vials and plagues in them. This sign could have to do with the constellation Pleiades or the star cluster Pleiades. It's filled up for the wrath of Elohim. And I saw as it were the sea of glass mingled with fire and them that have gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of Elohim and they sing the song of Moses the servant of Elohim and the song of the Lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works Yahweh Elohim Almighty just and true are thy ways thou King of Saints who shall not fear thee O Yahweh and give and glorify thy name for thou only art holy for all nations shall come and worship before thee for thy judgments are made manifest and after I looked and Behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. A door's open. Remember John? John saw the door opening and said, come up here. That's how it all started with the rapture. The rapture door was opening. And I told, I did a video on the rapture door. We should all take a look at the rapture door. But I believe that there's going to be like a spiritual portal that's going to open up. We're going to be taken to a safe place, it appears. That's what it looks like is this why he said um and so that's something that we should consider so if it opens to you you got to go through it do not look back if it doesn't open to your spouse you got to go through it if it doesn't open to your children you, that are at home the 25 year old children that are at home that aren't walking in the ways 
You got to go through it. You can't look back like Lot's wife. You can't look back at your house. You can't look back at your business, your job, your career. Whatever you got going on in your life, as of this time, you cannot look back. You got to go through that door. And there's a lot more that happened on this day that I'm going to get in and hopefully get in in another video coming up. Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. The earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of Yahweh? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from Yahweh and righteousness from the Elohim of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Yahweh, strong and mighty. Yahweh, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Yahweh of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. So that's something to think about. The doors are opened up and the King of Glory comes in. So hopefully you're blessed by this video. And I encourage you to check out these things and search these matters on your own. And I hope that you're blessed with this understanding. I take, I take no glory or praise for these understandings that I get to share with you, brethren. They've been shared with me. And um, freely receive, freely I give. So I hopefully you're blessed by it. You share with others. It's all praise to the Father and to the Son. Hallelujah.